Thanks for joining us at I Can Make Shoes. Today we're going to go through some really simple, completely untechnical ways of making patterns for sandals. What you'll need for this is some paper, a pencil, an eraser, ruler, scissors, and a last or your foot if you don't have one. Um, essentially what we're going to do here to make these um, patterns is we're going to use paper to make a paper sandal if you like um, and then those bits will end up being the patterns that you use to cut the leather. So what I usually do if I'm making something simple like this one here is get a nice width for the front strap. So I usually start by taking my ruler and if you start with the ruler width you can use that as a good guideline. Obviously if you want it a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner, you just measure it out until you've got it to the width that you'd like. So once you've done that, you can cut that out. Okay, so that's now a nice width for a front strap. What you want to do is then check to make sure that it's long enough to go over the top of the foot and around the insole. So depending on where you want it positioned depends on how long you need it to be. So if you want it just over the toe, something like that. If you want it up here, obviously you need it to be a little bit longer. So let's just say we want ours to sit around here. I can then cut away about that much excess. It's really important that you give yourself what's called a lasting allowance. So a little bit on either side that's to go underneath the sandal insole like that. So, presuming that we don't want to have any folded edges and that we're happy to have a raw edge, that's now a finished front strap. So I'm just going to put that to the side. If you wanted to do something a little bit more complicated at the front, like having a T-bar sort of thing, like on this sandal, you sort of want to adjust it so that you've got excess going up the foot. So I always start by doing something freehand. I'll start by just getting the width again from the ruler here. And don't be discouraged if you don't get this right first time round. You want to kind of keep adjusting it until you're really happy with the shape. Again, you can do this however thick or thin you want it to be, depending on the style of the sandal you're designing. Okay, so you can see the shape that I've drawn there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out and I'm just going to check the fit of it. this shape. Essentially what I want to do now is place it again over the last and just make sure that we've got enough lasting allowance on that edge that it would be able to fold over. The next thing you want to do is just figure out how much of a loop you want to have in there. So you can adjust this depending on whether you want it to sit higher or lower on the foot itself. But I would say something about that is about right. And I like to just mark on the pattern on the back where that loop will go to. Okay? So we'll put that one to the side as well. To get a little bit more complicated, I just wanted to talk you through creating a shape like this to go around the back. It's really difficult when you're first starting out to figure out how something 3D looks when it's flat. Um, I'm just going to draw for you um, a rough sort of guide to give you something like this. These two are essentially the same thing, only this one's much thicker at the front and this one's a bit thinner at the front here so that it can go through that loop. Um, also obviously this one has a buckle on it and this one doesn't. 
So I'll start by showing you what the shape should look like flat. And again, you can just keep playing around with this until you find a shape that you're happy with. But you can see how I'm not using any special tricks to do this. I'm just sort of figuring out how it might look. Okay, so this is what that shape should look like, or something like this, a version of that, when it's flat. Again, width of strap is irrelevant here. You can change that to whatever width you'd like, if you want it thicker or thinner. Um, if you want to have less of a gap, this is where your heel would sit. So, you know, you can have these straps much wider if you want it to cover more of your heel. Um, I'm just going to cut that out and then show you how we move to the next step. So this is the cut out back piece. So the way that that works is that it would be going around the back of the foot like so. And then this would wrap around and attach here at the side. And then you could pair that with a front strap like this. And that would essentially give you this style of sandal here. You could also pair that with this front section here, something like that. And that would give you a mix of the front of this one and the back of that one. Um, if you wanted to have multiple, you know, straps across the front, you just cut out extra strips. You know, you could have one, two, three, you could have a crossover there. You could have two thick, one thin, um, you know, you could have just quite a chunky thing there if you just wanted to have a slider, uh, whatever you want to do, but essentially the trick to making sandal patterns at all is just to cut out what you think you might want it to look like and just layer them up until you're happy with it. And once you're happy with it, you can use that to then cut out your leather. The only other thing I'll mention is that this is assuming that you're having a raw edge, which means that it's not folded along this edge here and it's not folded along this edge here. If you do want to have folded edges because maybe your sandals are, or your leather is thin or something like that, you just want to add a small allowance. So I'll just trace this strap out here. Okay. So if you wanted to have a folded edge, you would just need to add 5mm on each side. So about there and about there. And that would just be your folding allowance. We know that about this point is our lasting allowance. I always have my lasting allowance as approximate when I'm doing sandals because you don't know whether one part of your foot is going to be wider than another part um, or one of your feet is going to be wider than the other foot. Um, so you just want to have a little bit of flexibility there, especially if you decide that you want to change the angle of the way that it's sitting. But essentially, that's what you're looking at if you want to have a folded edge. Thanks for watching. For more videos, subscribe to the I Can Make Shoes YouTube channel.